the nightly business report good evening tonight foreign inflows to sri lanka's government securities saw further increases last week amid the country's deflationary policies and appreciation in the rupee currency Sri Lanka's construction sector non-performing loans which peaked at 17.1% after a currency collapse has eased to 14.1% despite a construction in credit. The start of the week is not a positive one at the Colombo bourses as both the ASPI and S&P SL20 closed today logging losses. And Volkswagen Group reports a 7% decline in third quarter global deliveries, an example of how Europe's car industry is facing tough challenges. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. Foreign inflows into Sri Lanka's government securities saw further increase last week. Central bank data has showed amid the country's deflationary policies and appreciation in the rupee currency. The foreign holding in Sri Lanka's treasury bills and treasury bonds increased by 15.7% or 6.9 billion rupees to 50,647 million rupees. Currency dealers say foreign investors bought short term as well as 2026 and 5 year bonds. They are taking a risk because of the country's deflationary policies where imports are curtailed and currency has been appreciating. Unless there is an increase in imports including allowing vehicle imports, the currency is likely to see appreciation pressure. The country saw an inflow of 4.4 billion rupees in the previous week. Currency dealers last week said the global trend also has been turning positive towards emerging markets due to the expected US Fed rate cuts. Sri Lanka, however, has suffered a foreign outflow of 66% or 78.1 billion rupees worth government securities in the first 9 months of this year. Sri Lanka's remittances coming from its overseas expatriate workers gained 15.2% to 555.6 million dollars in September this year compared to the same month last year held by more expatriates using the official banking channels. According to the central bank data in a financial stability review, Sri Lanka's construction sector non-performing loans which peaked at 17.1% after a currency collapse has eased to 14.1% despite a contraction in credit. Construction investment credit is usually one of the big beneficiaries when central banks print money to target inflation or growth and collapse as soon as stabilization crisis starts as inflation ceases to accelerate. Central banks typically cut rates by printing money through open market operations, buying back government bonds from banks, allowing them to give loans without deposits. The exercise tends to worsen loan to deposit ratios. In the last crisis, however, some foreign banks sharply curtailed all credit including interbank lending due higher risk perceptions including on government debt where an actual default or induced artificial default from debt restructuring was feared rocketing prices of construction material as well as falling disposable incomes put off people from new construction meanwhile the central bank said credit to the construction sector which was 14.1% of the total credit portfolio of the banking sector contracted 8.2% at the end of the second quarter of this year compared to a credit growth of 1% at the end of the second quarter of the year 2022 the construction sector was highly concentrated on residential construction activities and contracted by 183.3 billion rupees during the quarter ending 2024 In a significant move, the Colombo Stock Exchange has introduced high-yield bonds, allowing companies with ratings below investment grade to raise capital by way of issuing bonds via the CSE. Unlike standard listed corporate bonds which require a minimum rating of at least one notch above investment grade, this initiative enables companies that previously faced challenges in meeting such stringent requirements to access capital markets more easily. Only specific types of companies such as those regulated by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka or the Insurance Regulatory Commission of Sri Lanka are eligible to issue these high yield bonds. This ensures that regulated entities including banks, non-banking financial institutions and insurance companies can participate in this new financing opportunity. While these bonds will be listed on the Colombo Stock Exchange, exchange trading will occur on the over the counter platform restricted to qualified investors these investors similar to those in basel 3 compliance securities are typically more experienced in managing risks they have the opportunity to diversify their portfolios by investing in bonds that offer potentially higher returns but come with increased risk as they often manage portfolios with a broader risk appetite 
Sri Lanka's Board of Investment has established an online portal to streamline the clearance procedure for removing samples from zone firms with the Joint Apparel Association Forum and Sri Lanka Apparel Exporters Association. The Biagama Export Processing Zone has officially implemented the new system, which aims to improve efficiency and transparency for enterprises operating inside the zone. By transferring this critical licensing procedure online, the BOI hopes to cut delays, reduce paperwork and assist business in achieving their production and export schedules more easily. The launch of this online system is the part of BOI's large endeavour to upgrade its services and assist the digital transformation of the country's business sector. Future expansion of the technology to other export processing zones is likely to reduce operating bottleneck and deliver a more seamless experience for businesses across the country. The newly established technology enables to firm the competitively the newly established technology enables firms to completely manage the sample removal process online, streamlining what was previously a manual and time-consuming approach. Enterprises may now make requests via the digital. Enterprises may now make requests via the digital portal, explaining the samples they want to remove and indicating the reason, such as testing, exhibition or quality assurance. A specific board of investment officer evaluates each request after receiving it. If the information was submitted is complete and follows the criteria, the officer will approve the request. <laughs> Air Chief Marshal Harsha Abe Vikrama has been appointed as the Chairman of the Airport and Aviation Services Sri Lanka Private Limited. He joined the Sri Lanka Air Force in 1980 and was commissioned as a pilot officer in 1982 and participated in combat operations in the separatist conflict. He has a notable record in active combat and was appointed commander of the Sri Lanka Air Force in 2011 and later was promoted to the rank of Air Chief Marshal. Under his leadership, the SLAS engaged in nation-building projects and launched revenue-generating initiatives, including revitalizing the Heli Tours operation and introducing the SLAF commercial ventures such as Marble Beach Resort, to golf links, Eagles Lagoon View and Eagles Lakeside Banquet and Convention Hall. He oversaw significant developments such as the opening of the SLAF station Iranamadu's runway and improved management structures within the SLAF. Let's take a short commercial break now. Market updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The start to the week is not a positive one at the Colombo Bourses as both indices close today logging losses. The negative sentiment may see continuation into the following trading day. For more on today's trading sessions, we have with us Tarusha Ashokar from First Capital Holdings. Yeah, so today the All Share Price Index took a reversal note, closing the day on a negative territory at 12,246, losing 48 points. Similarly, S&P SL20 index also closed slightly lower at 3,623, losing 17 points. So profit taking was witnessed on the banking sector today, mainly had National Bank, Commercial Bank, Sampath Bank and National Development Bank significantly drag the index down. And on the brighter side, uh, on the brighter note, the plantation sector saw renewed buying interest along with increased activity in the apparel sector. And uh, in terms of investor participation, number of trades remained moderate and recorded at 15,000 levels, slightly lowered compared to the previous day trading. And accordingly, turnover also dipped to LKR 1.5 billion with significant contributions from the food, beverage and tobacco sectors, capital goods and consumer durables. Moving on, uh, top gainers for the day include Blue Diamond non-voting, SMB Finance Non-Voting and Nation Lanka Finance PLC. While top losers for the day are CT Holdings PLC, Lanka Credit and Business Finance, Bansi Royal Resorts Hikaruba PLC. Despite the negative sentiments in trading today, there is still hope being held out in the recovery and progress of the Sri Lankan economy. Well, how do these movements reflect on the market? For an analysis, we have with us Demanta Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Thanks, Anuradi. So the market saw a bit of a downtrend today and uh, we think uh, that is likely to be uh, short-lived uh, because the 
uh, low interest rate environment uh, there seems to be a lot of uh, investors uh, looking out for uh, alternative uh, investment opportunities so with that uh, we feel that the fund flow is likely to slowly come towards the uh, equity market overall uh, we think uh, buying interest is also likely to gradually come towards the end of the week because uh, now right now what is happening is we feel that it is uh, it is sort of like a consolidation phase after the huge uh, bull run that we saw over the past few weeks so with it uh, we feel that there could be a increased level of uh, activity and turnover towards the uh, end of the week uh, in addition to that, uh, the current quarter, the earnings are likely to be extremely good and uh, with it, uh, the results are likely to start uh, coming off towards the uh, early next month. So overall, overall with uh, all those things, we think that uh, there could be uh, some improvement in buying interest and also uh, it's likely to be mostly on uh, key sec sectors such as banking and uh, consumer sectors which are likely to recover significantly uh, in the current uh, economic context. Gold prices held steady today as investors assessed China's weekend stimulus announcement while also focusing on U.S. Federal Reserve officials' comments for further rate cut cues. Spot gold was changed at $2,657.93 per ounce. Bullion rose nearly 1% in the previous session and U.S. gold futures were flat at $2,675. Data on Friday showed unchanged U.S. producer prices last month, cementing the case for quarter point US interest rate cuts at upcoming Fed policy meetings. Traders see a roughly 89% chance of the Fed cutting rates by 25 basis points at its November meeting, with an 11% chance of leaving rates unchanged. The zero yielding bullion is preferred in a low interest rate environment. The dollar index rose 0.1%, putting pressure on greenback price metals. A stronger dollar makes them less attractive to other currency holders. Oil prices today wiped out nearly all gains made last week after data showed China's inflation rate declined and a lack of clarity on the country's economic stimulus plans raised fears about fuel demands in the world's biggest crude importer. Brent crude futures fell $1 to $78.04 per barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures dropped 1.3% to $74.56 per barrel. Both benchmarks gave up all their gains from last week, falling by more than 1.5% a barrel earlier today before recovering slightly. Brent gained 99 cents last week, while WTI climbed $1.18. China's deflationary pressures worsened in September, according to official data released on Saturday, and a press conference the same day left investors guessing about the overall size of a stimulus package to revive the world's second largest economy. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated slightly against the U.S. dollar in some commercial banks today compared to last week. At Commercial Bank, the buying rate for the U.S. dollar has decreased while the selling rate remains unchanged. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is performing against other global currencies. Take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The John Keels Group is set to open doors to Cinnamon Life at City of Dreams, Sri Lanka tomorrow. 
developed at an investment of over 1.2 billion US dollars by the John Kills Group. This is the largest and most ambitious private investment in the country, which will redefine the tourism landscape, catering to a diverse clientele, creating South Asia's most dynamic destination for business, leisure and entertainment. Cinnamon Life as City of Dreams Sri Lanka will encompass 687 luxurious rooms and offers multiple entertainment venues including ballrooms, high-tech event and conference facilities with the capacity to host over 5000 guests in multiple locations across its various unique spaces. This makes it the largest event venue in Colombo, setting a new standard for gatherings, hosting international conferences and large-scale events, positioning Colombo as a premier destination for global mass travel. With a dedicated team of over 1500 professionals, including 250 chefs, Cinnamon Life promises an extraordinary culinary journey. Guests can enjoy diverse dining from French bistro to an American grill and the most extensive selection of wines at the exclusive wine bar, complemented by a sophisticated two-tier champagne and cocktail bar. Over the coming few months, Cinnamon Life will continue to elevate its culinary landscape with the opening of its more dining experiences. In addition, the resort's diverse spaces and picturesque settings make it an ideal location for destination weddings and events right in the city, offering a unique blend of modern elegance and local charm for those seeking unforgettable experiences and celebrations. While Cinnamon Life as City of Dreams Sri Lanka opens tomorrow, the shopping mall and entertainment areas including the gaming facility and 130 key ultra luxury Nuwa Hotel are scheduled to open on mid next year, marking the final phase of this landmark project. Hella Apparel Holdings PLC has confirmed the successful completion of its rights issue raising 1.6 billion rupees through the issue of shares. This achievement reflects the strong support of the company's shareholders and will contribute to the strengthening of the Hella Group's balance sheet for future growth. The rights issue offered a total of 319,365,227 ordinary voting shares to existing shareholders on a proportional basis. As a result of the subscriptions received from the shareholders, including the company's top 3 shareholders, an application for additional shares the issue was successfully oversubscribed on the closing date. The funds raised are intended to be used to settle a portion of the group's existing bank borrowings as disclosed to the Colombo Stock Exchange via a shareholder circular. CTCLSA Capital Private Limited acted as the managers to the issue, while FJ and G D Serum supported the process as legal advisers and the SSP Corporate Services Private Limited provided registrar services. The rights issue is considered by the company's board of directors to be the first phase of company's capital augmentation strategy to strengthen its balance sheet and position the Hiller Group for profitable growth. The structure and details of the subsequent capital raises are to be determined and announced by the board of directors. Hell Apparel Holdings PLC provides sustainability focused apparel supply chain and brand management solutions encompassing design, sourcing market and distribution through this global footprint which includes a brand licensing division based in the United Kingdom. In a significant step towards encouraging solar power adoption island-wide, Sampath Bank PLC and Haley Solar, the renewable energy arm of Haley's Fentons, recently signed a memorandum of understanding to provide an easy and affordable lending scheme for rooftop solar PV installation investments targeting residential, commercial and industrial clusters. This initiative aims to encourage Sri Lankans to embrace solar power, yielding significant savings on electricity bills over the long run and contributing to a more sustainable environment. Commenting on the collaboration, Ayodhya Iddavela Pereira, managing director of Sampath Bank PLC, express enthusiasm about the partnership's potential to drive widespread adoption of solar power installations in the country. She emphasized the bank's commitment to supporting sustainable initiatives that align with the nation's renewable energy goals. Hasit Premathilaka, who is the managing director of Haley's Fentons, highlighted the importance of forging strategic alliances to accelerate the transition towards clean energy solutions. He emphasized Haley's Solar's dedication to delivering high-quality solar products and services while leveraging Sampath Bank's financial expertise to make solar power accessible to all. This initiative falls under Haley's Haley's Solar Initiative Nayak Nova Nayak, allowing customers to pay a low monthly bank instalment that is less than their current monthly electricity bill. As a result, the savings after paying the bank instalment could be invested in their family's future while enjoying free electricity for 20 years. In a major step for blockchain governance in South Asia, CoinSalon, in collaboration with Intersect, successfully hosted the inaugural annual members meeting at the Hilton in Colombo. It was a critical opportunity for the Sri Lankan blockchain community to engage with the global Cardano ecosystem, marking the first event of its kind in South Asia, alongside five other global events held in Japan, the United States, Portugal, Ghana, and Mexico. 
As a part of Intersex's broader vision for 2025, the AM in Sri Lanka is a part of a larger push to promote governance, transparency and innovation within the Cardano blockchain ecosystem. The discussions at the event emphasized the need of stronger community engagement and laid out plans to promote blockchain technology education and adoption in emerging markets in Sri Lanka. Intersect is a member-based organization from the Cardano ecosystem focusing on decentralized governance and the future development of blockchain technology. The AMM also highlights Intersect's upcoming committee and board elections, allowing members to shape Cardano's governance. These elections are an opportunity for members to take leadership roles and contribute to the long-term success of Cardano. Sri Lanka's blockchain community is growing rapidly with increasing interest in Cardano's decentralized model of governance and its potential to disrupt traditional industries. The festive season kicked off in grand style at both Anantara Kalutra Resort and Avani Kalutra Resort as they hosted their much-anticipated inaugural holiday event, a vibrant Christmas cake mixing ceremony. With a delightful fusion of tradition and luxury, the resorts welcome guests and staff alike to join in the age-old custom, marking the beginning of a holiday season of brimming with joy and festivity. In the warm and inviting setting, participants donned aprons and rolled up their sleeves, immersing themselves in the ceremonial mixing of fruits, spices and spirits of ingredients that symbolize prosperity and togetherness. This lively event collaborated for its connection to rich culinary heritage was enhanced by the laughter and camaraderie that filled the air, creating an unforgettable experience for all in attendance. As hands works together in a beautiful symphony of flavors, it was clear that this was not just about making cake, but about coming together as community to share in the holiday spirit. The ceremonial beginning of the Christmas season was further highlighted by the elegance of the surroundings, with both resorts showcasing their stunning deco and attention to detail, setting a luxurious yet festive tone for the weeks to come. With the cake mixing ceremony setting a stage for festive celebrations, guests can look forward for a calendar full of indulgent experiences, from lavish feasts to heartwarming gatherings making the holiday season at Anantara and Avani Kalutara a truly memorable one. Going in for a short commercial break, we'll be right back with global updates. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian stocks swung between gains and losses today as investors grappled with China's broad economic stimulus promises made over the weekend, which lacked specific details. The divergence was evident with shares in Hong Kong opening lower and remaining choppy, while mainland Chinese stocks started strong. The Hang Seng Index last traded 0.41% lower in contrast to the CSI 300 Blue Chip Index, which rose 1.52%. The Shanghai Composite Index gained 1.66%, and property stocks, both onshore and offshore, saw solid gains as investors hoped the latest stimulus measures could benefit China's struggling property sector. The Hang Seng Mainland Properties Index advanced 1.37%, while the CSI 300 Real Estate Index jumped 4.1%. This mixed performance left the MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan up a modest 0.12%, with trading volumes in Asia thin today due to a holiday in Japan. Volkswagen Group reported a 7% decline in third quarter global deliveries, an example of how Europe's car industry is facing tough challenges. European car companies also face a potential trade war between the EU and Beijing. Volkswagen Group reported a 7% fall in third quarter global deliveries on Friday. It was yet another example of how Europe's car industry faces tough challenges, including weak demand from China and high production costs at home. Europe's car companies also face a potential trade war between the European Union and Beijing. The EU has agreed to move forward with import tariffs on Chinese-made electric vehicles due to alleged subsidies. VW is currently undergoing a major revamp. It's considering whether to close some German plants for the first time due to weak European demand and Chinese competition. The also giant also cites the challenges of vehicle electrification and high costs in Germany for the potential closures. Volkswagen's deliveries to the world's biggest car market, China, fell 15% in Q3. This dragged down the global figure to a little under 2.18 million vehicles. The automaker has cut its annual outlook for a second time in less than three months. 
It also expects to deliver around 9 million cars this year, representing an annual decline. Fellow German rivals BMW and Mercedes also said Thursday third quarter sales were hit by sluggish demand and Chinese competition. Boeing will cut 17,000 jobs, 10% of its global workforce, and delay first deliveries of its 777X jet by a year as the plane maker deals with a month-long strike. Boeing plans to cut 17,000 jobs, or 10% of its global workforce, and record $5 billion in losses in the third quarter, as the U.S. plane maker continues to spiral during a month-long strike. In a message to employees, Boeing CEO Kelly Ortberg said downsizing was necessary to align with its financial reality. Strike! 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 It comes after production of the 737 MAX, 767, and 777 Jets halted due to the ongoing strike by 33,000 U.S. West Coast workers. Reaching a deal to end the work stoppage is critical for Boeing. On Wednesday, it filed an unfair labor practice charge with the National Labor Relations Board accusing the machinist union of failing to bargain in good faith. The International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, which represents striking workers, described Boeing's claims as groundless. Ratings agency S&P estimated the strike is costing Boeing $1 billion a month, and it risks losing its prized investment grade credit rating. Boeing also notified customers that it expects first delivery of its 777X to be in 2026 due to challenges in development, the flight test pause, and the work stoppage. Even before the strike began on September 13th, the company was burning cash as it struggled to recover from a January mid-air panel blowout on a new plane that exposed weak safety protocols and spurred U.S. regulators to curb its production. On Friday, Boeing faced a Texas court hearing with a judge who will decide whether to accept the plane maker's offer to plead guilty to fraud under a deal with the Justice Department. Boeing has agreed to pay up to a $487.2 million fine, spend at least $455 million on improving safety, and face three years of court-supervised probation and independent oversight. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more key updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.